Greetings, folks. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about 10 new ArcGIS Pro lesson activities, learn paths, and migration reflections. A new set of 10 ArcGIS Pro lessons empowers GIS practitioners, instructors, and students with essential skills to find, acquire, format, and analyze public domain spatial data to make decisions. Described in this video and in this blog post, this set was created for three main reasons. One, to provide a set of analytical lessons that can be immediately used. Two, to update the original 10 lessons created by my colleague Jill Clark and I to provide a practical component to our ESRI Press book entitled The GIS Guide to Public Domain Data. And number three, to illustrate and demonstrate how ArcGIS Desktop or ArcMap lessons can be converted into ArcGIS Pro and to reflect upon that process. Here's a summary of the lessons. They can be used in full, in part, or modified to suit your own needs. They include 10 lessons. They include 64 work packages. A work package is a set of tasks focused on solving a specific problem. They include 370 guided steps. They include 29 to 42 hours of hands-on immersion, and that range is to accommodate different learning styles and different uh, experiences with GIS in the past. They include over 600 pages of content. They include 100 skills that are fostered, covering GIS tools, GIS methods, working with data, and communication. They include 40 data sources, covering 85 different data layers. The themes covered include climate, business, fire, floods, hurricanes, land use, sustainability, ecotourism, invasive species, oil spills, volcanoes, earthquakes, and agriculture, and some others that I didn't mention right there. The areas covered include the globe, but also specific areas such as Orange County, California, the Luce Hills of Nebraska, Colorado, Texas, Brazil, New Zealand, the Great Lakes of the USA and Canada, the Gulf of Mexico, Iceland, the Caribbean Sea, and Kenya. The lessons are aimed at university level graduate and university or community college undergraduate students. Some GIS experience is very helpful, though not absolutely required. Still, my advice is as follows. Don't use these lessons as students' first exposure to GIS, but rather in an intermediate or advanced setting. Now, why should you use these lessons? I believe these lessons offer eight unique advantages. First of all, the lessons engage students by focusing on the geographic inquiry process, beginning with the problem base to be solved, such as the optimal site for citing a new business in a metropolitan area, the rate and pattern of the spread of an invasive species, the ideal locations for growing tea in Kenya, assessing reservoir and dam vulnerability in the event of a hurricane and more. So asking a geographic question, acquiring data, investigating that data, analyzing it, and then making a decision, then acting on what you learned. Number two, while those working through the lessons build solid GIS skills, to be sure, building expressions, joining data layers, intersecting, projecting, georegistering imagery, and others, these skills are not limited to learning more GIS. Rather, skills in data management and communication are a prominent part of these lessons. At the end of each lesson, students are asked to communicate the results of their research in a variety of ways, including sharing to ArcGIS Online, making a short video, and creating a web mapping application such as a story map. Number three, a significant portion of each lesson touches on assessing, accessing, formatting, projecting, i.e. developing data competencies. Helping people make wise decisions about the data and giving them practical skills in doing so is one of our chief goals with these lessons and the book. A balance is struck between engaging with enough data to make a realistic scenario, but recognizing that more is not always better, right folks? Number four, the same lesson is available in ArcGIS Desktop or ArcMap format and in an ArcGIS Pro format, so that those still hesitating about whether I should migrate to ArcGIS Pro from ArcGIS Desktop can use these as an example that it is not only possible, but there are many advantages of doing so. Number five, questions posed in each lesson focus on thoughtful reflection about the data and the process, such as what difference 
would data at a different scale have on your analysis results? Or what was the most significant thing you learned about natural hazards in this lesson? And if you had more time, what data set might you have also wanted to include in your analysis? Where do you think you could ob obtain such data? Number six, these lessons have been tested and verified and refined over several terms with students across many different universities. Number seven, an answer key is available for each lesson. Number eight, a lesson on building an ecotourism map in New Zealand allows students to use their gained skills in an independent project where they decide what themes to use, what data to use, how to process it, and what problems and GIS skills uh, they want, they're going to solve. Now, how do you access these lessons? The ideal way to work through the lessons is in this learn path, which bundle the readings of the book's chapters, selected blog essays, and the hands-on activities. The learn paths are split into three parts as follows. First of all, solving problems with GIS and public domain data, part one of three. You learn how to find, evaluate, and analyze data to solve location-based problems through this set of 10 chapters and short essay readings and 10 hands-on lessons. That's learn path number one. There's a second learn path that covers the second part of that and a third learn path that covers the third part. The learn paths allow for content to be worked through in sequence as shown here. You can also access these lessons by accessing this gallery in ArcGIS Online, shown here. If you would like to modify the lessons for your own use, hey, feel free. This is why the lessons have been provided in a zipped bundle as PDF files and as MS Doc files, Word files, shown here. This video provides an overview for how to use the lessons. While the intent is for learners to actually download or stream the data from the original sources as an important part of the learning ex experience, the data for each lesson in zip file format is also included in this ArcGIS Online gallery. The reason the data are provided in this way is because I recognize that sometimes bandwidth is limited and or the data portals are slow, they change, or they're temporarily offline. The titles of the 10 lessons are as follows. For more information, see the detailed metadata for the lessons here. Lesson 1, Assessing Impacts of Climate Change on Coasts, Ecoregions, and Population Globally. Lesson 2, Citing an Internet Cafe, a high-speed Internet Cafe in Orange County, California. Lesson 3, Citing a Fire Tower in the Lewis Hills of Nebraska, Land of the Lewis. Lesson 4, Analyzing Floods and Floodplains Along the Front Range in Colorado. Lesson 5, Assessing Potential Hurricane Hazards in Texas. Lesson 6, Analyzing Land Use and Sustainability in Brazil. Lesson 7, Creating a Map for an Ecotourism Company in New Zealand. Where is that? On the other side of the globe? No, it's right down here. Awesome. Lesson 8, Assessing Citizen Science Portals and Analyzing Data About Invasive Species. Lesson 9, investigating three hazards, the Gulf oil spill, the volcano in Iceland, and the Haiti earthquake. Lesson 10, selecting the most suitable locations for tea cultivation in Kenya. The intent of the lessons was that they were to be used in conjunction with reading the book. Therefore, the contents of the book have also been placed online. The book chapters are in this gallery. The book not only discusses sources and types of spatial data, but also issues such as assessing data quality, open data access, spatial law, the fee versus free debate, data and national security, the efficacy of spatial data infrastructures, and the impact of cloud computing and the emergence of GIS as a software as a service model. Since the book was published, ongoing social and technological innovations and issues continue to change how data users and data providers work with geospatial information to help address a diverse set or diverse range of social, economic, and environmental needs. Therefore, we established the Spatial Reserves Data Blog to promote a current, ongoing dialogue with data users and providers and post frequent assessments of new tools, data portals, books, and articles, curriculum, and issues surrounding spatial data. Recent entries include imagery. It is what it is. Well, not always. Be a wise consumer of fun posts, too. The application for extracting and exploring analysis-ready samples, or appears. Reflections on a new article about the geospatial data fabric. Facial recognition technology, and a list of the top 12 sites for Landsat data. A selection of these blog essays are also listed in the book's resources page at Esri Press. So I invite you to explore 
these 10 new ArcGIS Pro lesson activities, learn paths, and migration reflections. Thanks, and watch my related video on my reflections about how to migrate from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro. Thanks. Thanks.